Hi, this tutorial covers three-point perspective cityscape. We are going to look at how to draw a cityscape from a bird's eye point of view. Um, <clears throat> this means we're going to place the horizon line very, very high on the page in a bird's eye point of view. We're also going to use three vanishing points. Two will be on the horizon line and one will be placed far below the horizon line. Um, that's basically the recipe for a uh, bird's eye point of view. That would be a high placed horizon line and a very low placed um, va third vanishing point. Um, so basically what we want to do is start with the vertical. It can go straight up and down or it can kind of angle. And we're going to continue building our structure just like you would in two point perspective. Here you can see I'm drawing a line from a designated lower element of this drawing uh, where I want the bottom of the building to be and extending it toward the right vanishing point. This is the top of the building and the bottom of the building I'm extending towards the left vanishing point. Then I want to delineate the entire building by closing off the vertical parts that line up to the third vanishing point below. I can create the top of the building by lining up with the right and left vanishing point again. So taking a look at this, you can see I've built a rectangular prism in three-point perspective. All of the lines in this are traveling toward one of the three vanishing points. Um, and I'll darken it here so that you can see that. I'll darken the horizon line too. The horizon line should be darkened um, in any drawing. Um, it basically is the real area where the sky meets the ground. It helps anchor your images. So here I'm going to add a building to the left of the original building. I'm going to use my vertical, um, my perspective center by drawing an X through the front of the building instead and then um, finding the center, the vertical center in a three-point perspective it's going to follow that third vanishing point below. And that's going to create a peak here, like so. So a lot of what you learned in two-point perspective carries over to three-point. You just need to remember to apply it to um, the three vanishing points. Um, in two-point perspective, you have vertical lines. Um, and in three-point perspective, those vertical lines instead travel toward the third vanishing point below. Um, so I've added in some extra buildings. I'm going to find the vertical, um, vertical and horizontal center of this so that I can place the floors or windows of the building. This is important because there is foreshortening happening in this image. Um, when there are floors that you want to add into this, they're not all going to be equally spaced. They're going to be spread out differently. As they get farther away from us, they're going to become, they're going to converge and become um, closer and closer together. So I do this by finding the perspective center. That's going to be the middle floor. Then I can find the perspective center above that, um, and that would be the next floor up. And I can find the perspective center below that, and that would be the next floor down. So let's assume this building had four floors. This is how I would find those four floors. Um, this is a little bit more tedious than convergence methods we've used in the past, but it's helpful because we're finding how these floors converge within a confined space like this. Um, using the convergence methods that I addressed in um, some of my tutorials on two-point perspective, um, those are good for sort of areas that don't have a structured beginning and end like this. So they do apply, but they're a little bit harder to use. So I want to add in a sidewalk. I'm going to follow those vanishing points on the horizon line. Sidewalk is laying flat on the ground, so it will not use the third vanishing point below. The third vanishing point below is only used when dealing with things that are vertical, like this door here. Uh, you can see that I centered that on the perspective center here. I'm going to add in a window here. Again, the window is vertical off the ground, so I'm using that third vanishing point. I want to find the middle of this building over here, so I am using uh, my perspective center to to add in some um, to add in some floors over here. You can see I'm following pretty much the same methods that I used on the building on the right. I'm just using them over here on the left as well to divide that space up. Uh, and I can do the same thing um, vertically, just using the perspective centers. 
So you can see I'm trying to, to create different types of window treatments for each of these um, to add interest. Um, now I'm moving on to, um, I'm going to use horizontal convergence on the sidewalk. I lay out this corner square, follow this front point through the middle point, and that leads to the diagonal vanishing point on the horizon line. That's how I'm going to find the convergence of the um, sidewalk blocks. And this is a review of what I cover um, in some of my other tutorials on um, convergence, horizontal convergence, and two-point perspective. The diagonal vanishing point is merely providing you with guidelines to tell you where these, these um, sidewalk creases are going to occur. You don't actually end up darkening them in your drawing. Um, now if I want to include changing planes, this is where things can get a little bit tricky. So I want this road to change direction and it's going to hit a, um, a point on the horizon line. And that basically means that it's traveling flat toward that point on the horizon line. The next stretch of road I want to go uphill, so I'm going to place a vanishing point up in the sky. The transition of that is going to be horizontally across from each other, these two points. The next stretch in the road I want to level off and land on the horizon line again. So I draw guidelines to that. Again, making sure that that junction where that changes direction, those points are aligned horizontally across from each other. So when I darken that in, you can see this, the road goes toward the right, goes uphill toward the right even more, flattens out toward the right, um, and then travels flat again towards the horizon line. That is an example of changing angles and changing planes on a road. Uh, I can add in a sidewalk or a road here. Find the perspective center to add in the center dashes of the road. Remember those aren't going to be um, laid out exactly uh, in perspective either. One thing I do when I'm creating the dashes is that you remember the dashes of the road are going to diminish in space um, just as the the sidewalk creases are going to diminish in space. So what I tend to do is I'll find the center where the dashes are by using that perspective center. You can see it doesn't line up with the visual center, rather it lines up with the perspective center. And then I use the lines that I've figured out from the sidewalk creases to determine how much those dashes are going to diminish in space. So this dash lines up with the first. Um, sidewalk crease, the second one you know is a, is a space, the third one is a dash, the fourth sidewalk crease is a space. If I want to add um, an element into the foreground here, you can see it becomes a little bit distorted as it travels outside of this kind of triangle created by these three vanishing points, but it's sort of an effective um, visual here. Uh, so I can add something into the foreground. Not everything has to exist behind the street. Um, remember too, anything vertical like trees or anything like that is going to follow that third vanishing point. So all the trees, <clears throat> flagpoles, um, anything like that, anything that travels vertically off the ground is going to follow that third vanishing point. Keep in mind as we get closer to that third vanishing point we have more of an overhead view of the objects. Um, here too I can play up my horizon line by creating sort of a mountain range and make it a little bit more interesting. Um, some other details that you can add into the space, maybe another building in the background. So um, adding details like the, the roof here, I'm going to throw in some, some people here I think to add a little bit of sense of scale to the space. Again, anything that's vertical is following this third vanishing point. Now, um, here's my little people. Hello, hello. Um, and for the sake of composition, I think I'm going to, um, here I can darken it so you can see a little bit of what I've done so far. I want to put in another path here on the side that's using um, changing planes and changing angles. Again, you can see the way that these line up horizontally. This is going uphill because of vanishing points above the horizon line here and here. And then it's leveling out. I kind of want it to look like it crosses the street here. So I could darken in this path and that creates a sense that this goes through the park. So hopefully this was helpful. You can kind of see how you can build a city shape in perspective using um, three-point perspective, 
horizontal and vertical convergence as well as um, changing planes and changing angles.